Hello gentles and ladymen, I'm Lon Gaming, and this video today is all about the Malta Grand Master, which is, in my opinion, an S-Class Explorer up there in the same league as the War Chiefs. Uh, not for stats, but for everything. Just utility across the board. And then in the late game, for stats as well. So, uh, a lot of people have taken the Explorer for granted in combat because they're so used to the explorer not being super useful in a fight uh, especially in like the early game uh, or like at, well, especially during the mid game where a lot of the fighting happens um, the explorer is generally just chalked up to another unit added to your pool you know but he's so much more than that and that's what today's video is going to focus on is how you are using your explorer wrong as malta and how you can fix it and how you can dominate the battlefield with him. All of the small scenarios, the battle scenarios that we will be playing out, or all thanks to my good friend Tio, who is on the other play team playing Sweden. Uh, for the for the purpose of the test, we are using Sentinels and Corollians. We probably should use Musketeers because they're a little bit more universal, but you know it is what it is. Uh, we set up the numbers so that the the Sentinels will lose without um, any with, without any kind of, uh, of trickery or micro tricks. Uh, so uh, here we go. We, we end up setting up so that there are um, si that there are eight Sentinels to uh, and the Explorer versus ten Corollians. And uh, so here in this first example here, we can see how uh, we, we, we we can see how the Corollians do in fact win in this engagement. Attack just doesn't work. <laughs> it, it is really seriously cool how they have a halberd. Right? In this battle, we use the explorer my, like how uh, most civilizations use their explorer in early game fights like this by simply just adding one to the unit roster in in a to, to your unit mass. Uh, but uh, that is not what necessarily what you want to be doing with your uh, multi grand master in this game, and you're about to see why in a second. Uh, what you actually want to do is build the depots. You build gunpowder depots right in the enemy's face, right alongside their army. Uh, especially in these little early game fights, uh, because it forces them to make one of a few decisions. They can either run away from the fight, they can either focus on your military and ignore your depot and explorer and risk an explosion, they can focus down the explorer and take a whole bunch of shots from your military while they do so, or they can focus down the depot, which when they destroy it before it gets built, gives you most of the resources back so you can just build another one in their face while they continuously get shot at by the opponent. Uh, you can see that there's a... It, it puts pressure on the opponent and forces them to make a decision, and no matter what, you're still going to come out on top. And we are going to see that uh, throughout these further examples. This scenario here is what happens when the enemy decides to siege down the depot itself. You start constructing. The enemy starts sieging it down, and while they're wasting time, you're taking pot shots, and then you get the resources back because the foundation was destroyed, and you just build it right over again. Right. Yeah. Ah, see, now you killed the explorer. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> In this example, the Corollians sieged down the gunpowder depots. They ended up killing two or three of the uh, foundations, but in doing so, they spent a lot of time. Uh, they spent a long time sieging that down so that the Sentinels do not get their speed boost and the explosion doesn't happen. Uh, and uh, and after a while, they finally managed to get the explorer down. Uh, after after a while of sieging uh, of just sieging the depots, but during that time, the Sentinels themselves had depleted most of the, uh, the most of the Corollian mass and as a matter of fact at the end of it the eight sentinels had killed all ten Corollians but only lost one unit and the whole project costed me probably about 40 wood and 40 coin. In this next example Tio will instead focus fire my explorer right from the get-go. 
uh, well, he, uh, to prevent him from building the depot in the first place. But he's only going to start firing at the Explorer after the depot starts getting built. Similar to last time, because the Corolians had to stop and hit the Explorer before the depot went up, uh, he and I, I ended up only losing a single Sentinel, while the enemy lost a lot more. After that second bout, we found it kind of odd and strange that the Corolians would kill just as many Sentinels after focusing the Explorer compared to focusing the depots, considering uh, the Explorer we thought uh, took a little bit less time to focus down, so we did it a second time, but ended up with the exact same results of me only losing one Sentinel after dispatching of all ten Corolians. In this next battle, Tio is going to be specifically targeting my troops over my Explorer or Depot. Uh, however, due to the Explorer being in front, he still takes some shots that Tio doesn't want him to take, and it causes him to reorganize, uh, reposition his units into a different spot while my units took some pot shots at him, which is kind of just an unfortunate result of the test. Uh, but because the depot is not being challenged, it got uh, complete, and because I had enough of the sentinels left over already, I opted, instead of exploding, to just park the sentinels under the depot for a faster rate of fire and clean the fight up. As you can see, we only lost three sentinels. Just like with the previous, we performed this one a second time to account for variancy. Uh, in this one, he was a lot more on my uh, units right from the get-go, and I had a lot less of them, uh, and due to some focus fire, I ended up killing a, a few less of the units quickly, as I as I would uh, as would be ideal. So in this situation, the depot went up, and it's already a losing battle. So I immediately detonate it and run away. He moves away as well, but lost half of his HP, and this just went from a losing battle to a battle where we both tie. While I did technically win by one unit, uh, one, one Sentinel, and keeping my Explorer alive, of course, uh, this also naturally resulted in me, uh, in both of us losing our masses, basically resulting in a tie. However, it is still technically a multi-victory if you take into account the fact that he had more dudes than I did, so uh, he lost 10 Corolians and I lost 7 Sentinels, which is a net win for resources. The rules of this next engagement were that my six sentinels and explorer would be charging his barracks uh, while he has five Corolians and the ability to train five uh, another batch of five, whereas I don't in this scenario, although in an actual game, you know, I probably would be training more units. And in this situation, the best thing to do is just place the depots right against the barracks itself uh, and then detonate it as uh, I, I, either when the battle looks like it's lost to damage the barracks or just whenever it, you de deign it best to cause a nice big explosion. <laughs> A second. This whole scenario was ignoring the possibility of me, the attacking player, also training more troops to run into the base and support, 
but you get the, the the picture that in this case it put pressure on the opponent and then stopped him from and then stopped him from what would have been a comeback killing all of my sentinels and instead just left me with one uh, left me with one alive and him with none where he very easily could have had three to four left alive and me none had I not done the depots as well as dealing plenty of damage to the uh, barracks itself. Next, we decided to test the actual range of the depot since it feels like it's a lot bigger than the 16 range it advertises. Um, Why are they holding a oh. the sword that way? Oh, no, 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 um, Sentinels, go back, go back, go back, go back, Sentinels. I'm gonna squeeze them in a little bit more. There you go. Just keep in mind you have to do this relatively quickly now because three of them are seeking. Yeah, looks like looks like they're. The depot will start self-destructing after a while. Oh, okay. Once you reach That's a certain that. point, the depot will lose all of its HP on its own. I didn't okay, know that. Okay, yeah. Now you're completely sense. out of my line of sight with gaslighting now, so we're good. All right, I'm gonna detonate it. Yeah. Okay. That okay. affected. That I affected I don't the... I I don't have any line of sight now, so I can't see what all it affected. Um, it affected nine Corleans deep. Nine Corleans deep. Yeah. Uh, the, okay. the, the damage does taper I'm, I'm off. gonna I'm gonna run my explorer through. Your troops are still on standard ground mode, right? They haven't moved. Yeah, yeah, they, they're all they're all on standard ground. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they haven't moved. I'm just gonna walk my explorer by without injuring and look at this. So the first Corlean is dead, right? Wait, no. no. It's it, it's just like it's a like half HP. Oh. Wow, dude, that is crazy. Yeah, the last Corlean that all oh, oh, that took damage took ten damage. The last scenario that we did was in the case of spotting a rush before it happens. Uh, in this scenario, I have 10 Corollians in my base. I walk forward and spot that my opponent is building racks, and he is going to be pushing in with 15 Corollians. So I had 10 Sentinels, and he's going to be pushing in with 15 Corollians. After I spot the racks, I immediately build four depots in my base. Just I just randomly pick some. And I'm allowed to build one more batch of Corolians and uh, of Sentinels for 15 total, and he's allowed to build one more batch of Corolians for 20 total. Let's see how this one goes. Yeah. Go ahead and push. I have one depot up, just just the one, but. That kind of destroyed my own house, but like worth it. <laughs> oh, I forgot to train my extra batch. I forgot, I forgot my extra batch. batch. <laughs> but like, even with these like heavy losses that I'm taking, you still can't like quite push me. Yeah, yeah, no. no. I mean, if I, I, if I, if I, I like get on top, get on top of me, that one of these things. things like, and, and then of course I still have my Minutemen as well. At this point, I moved my explorer behind his military to build a gun depot, a gun depot to um, either force him to retreat or make it so that he can no longer ever retreat without getting blown to smithereens. That's fucked up. up. What are you doing right now? I'm trying to close you in. Yeah. You're literally, You're literally taking, taking inches from, from me. <laughs> <laughs> I have no issue with that. And see, now I'm just gonna let you, like, fucking, like, siege that all you want, you know? Because what's that gonna accomplish for you? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying, I'm just to, trying make to make sure that, sure that it's, it's not in my way. way. See, it, it starts to detonate itself once you get to that point. It's literally yeah. like losing its own hit points. Yeah. yeah. 
but it's still not going to go down for a little bit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it still has oh, blood. It's, it's still, still going. going. Oh, oh, my God. God. That's, that's so scary. That's, that's fucked, fucked up. up. Are you, Are you kidding, kidding me? me? <laughs> and now all my Napoleons are back. That. <laughs> you you cut, cut that out. out. <laughs> Yeah, you can't win from this. I had, I had ten Carol the Sentinels, and I upped it to like I, I had ten Sentinels, and I upped it to fifteen by the end of the game. That, that's all that happened here. That's, that's fucked, fucked up. up. I also have something of note is that the entire time he spent sieging down that gunpowder depot, I just parked my military next to the hospital and healed up. Additionally, although I didn't actually do it, I could have put settlers in the town center because the town center is within range to gain a, an attack speed boost from the uh, from, from the gunpowder depots. I opted not to, and this time in, in this in this specific scenario, though, uh, just for testing purposes. And results of were him losing 17 of his 20 Corollians and me losing only eight of my 15 Sentinels. A couple last second notes before we go. If you age up to age 5, age it with Malta ever, always go with the Scottish Marshal so you can get the Obrahow attack so you can do goofy things like this. Um, also, of note, the Bailiff card that Malta has in age 1, the Advanced Explorer card essentially, uh, provides your explorer 250 more hit points as well as making as well as cutting down all of the construction time around him by a third. So this makes the gunpowder depots go up in 10 seconds as opposed to 15, meaning the enemy will only get three volleys as opposed to uh, the five that they would normally get. A very worthwhile card, I think. So uh, there you have it, and goodbye. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out, and it really and it, uh, it really it helps keep me going and motivated to do this good for you guys. So thank you very much, and goodbye.